let's talk about the basics of economics. Economics is a social science. Obviously, this is social studies. We're not studying history. We're not studying geography. What we're studying is production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. Why do we make things? Why do we buy things? If there's anything an eighth grade student should know well, it is buying things. Better than any other class you may take, math, science, whichever, you know how to shop. Every country has a different economy. They are all different. At different places, they make different things, they buy different things. Prices are different. It's completely different. So there is a bit of a geography to it. There's a lot of things that connect with economics. But just envision a different market or store in every different country that sells and makes different things. All right, here's the basic concept. The more we spend, the more we will produce. If we're willing to buy things, then stores and businesses will be willing to make more things. And that basically means our country will produce more. We'll make more cars, we'll make more fruit, we'll make more vegetables, we'll make more meat, more candy. And that is the stronger or more stable our country is. If our country, now think about it this way, if our country is selling things, they're not just selling raw goods, they're also providing services. If we're willing to buy health care, there will be more health care available, and so that way we'll be healthier. If we're willing to spend more on education, then more education will be sold, making us smarter. If we're willing to buy homes, then we will all have homes made for us. If we can't afford a home, we don't get homes. So just like you exist, the more you spend, the more you can buy, the more you can have, the same thing works for the country. If we don't spend, the opposite works. So we can look at economics from a small micro level or macro is in the whole big picture. And a lot of times the things that relate to you also relate to the entire country. Money, money, money. If we spend, if you can spend and have what you need, then more than likely the country can buy what they need. And that means the country is producing what you need. So once again, the more you spend, the more it's made, the more workers are going to need to be hired. Now, if more workers are working, that means more spending will happen. And if more spending happens, more production happens, and it goes up and up and up. And this is really good. This means that production is providing everything we need as a consumer. Now, the reverse can happen as well. Now, we're going to talk about gross domestic product. The word gross means total. The word domestic means home or within country. And product is what is made. So when we talk about the gross domestic product, we're trying to examine what is being produced in our country. If a lot of things are being produced, a lot of useful things, then we can say that country is very useful. If you live in a country where not very many things are produced or made, then maybe a lot of your needs are not met. And maybe your country is not strong or stable. So if you have a high gross domestic product, then that's probably meaning that there's a lot of things that you have access to. Healthcare, education, food, resources. This is how we measure an economy. Now, is the economy providing goods and services? How much? That's one of the things we measure with the GDP. We try to find out, is our economy or our production of goods, is our economy providing what you need? Not really looking at what is made, because you can look at all these things on the shelf. What we're really measuring, we're not exactly measuring all of the products. You know, We're not counting every car. What we're counting is how many cars are sold, because we need to connect it to spending. What are people able to purchase? And also that means you know, stores are not going to produce things that aren't sold. They have kind of have a, a symbiotic relationship. We're really, when we calculate GDP, we're calculating the amount of products that are being purchased, not just being made. Why measure the economy? Well, this gives us a good idea. If the economy is doing well, then the citizens of the economy are doing well. If we look at economy in Eastern Europe, and their economy, their GDP number is low and struggling, we can make assumptions. We can say maybe it's because of their education. Maybe it's the lack of health care. Maybe it's lack of housing. Maybe it's because in their country they cannot grow produce or farm the right uh, vegetables or li livestock that's necessary for survival. We can come up with all kinds of ideas by just looking at this simple number. You know, and like I said, the opposite can be justified. And here we go, we can see the red are countries with low GDPs, dark blue is a country with a high GDP. And real quickly you can see, in America there's a lot of opportunity, there are a lot of goods that you can buy and consume. Healthcare, education, all these resources and goods and services are produced, and even in Europe. And if you look at countries in Africa, you could probably make the assumption that yes, their GDP is low and that means that not a lot of things are being produced or sold 
and of those are health care of those are education they do not have the goods that they need and so we get a better understanding of the world we get a better understanding of problems around the world and now we'll have a better understanding of how do we help other countries how do we make the world better why is our country so good these are things that we can study statistically not just make things up we can look at the numbers and get a good idea of why places are the way they are with evidence evidence is important and GDP is evidence here's another graph to show you the same thing instead of just showing in collars it makes them fatter or boom or bust out and you can see North Carolina is huge Europe is big China is emerging look how small and skinny South America and Africa are these countries have low GDPs that means they are not able to produce all the goods and services that the country necessarily needs so people starve people don't have shelter people die from disease that's not the case in America because of our high GDP well not necessarily because of our high GDP our high GDP reflects that uh, and we can actually look at it based on per state. We can look at it on a smaller scale. And you say, well, why is this stuff useful? Well, someday you may want to move. Maybe someday you want to live. Maybe someday you want to sell things to other states. You can look and see, well, where are the states with the money? And you see on, this, on here, Montana and West Virginia don't really, are not really wealthy states. There's not a lot of spending. So you're probably not going to sell things. If you want to sell West Virginia t-shirts to people in West Virginia, you may not do as well as if you sold I love New York t-shirts to people in New York. Look at all the spending in New York. Look at Boston. You ever see a lot of Boston Red Sox hats, hats around? Well obviously people in Massachusetts have a lot of money to spend. Connecticut has a lot of money to spend. You have to make these ideas. Now maybe you're not going to run for the business, you're not going to operate the business, but maybe you'll work for a business. And if you want to pick a stable business, you want to look at a stable state or a stable region. These things are important. They are significant. This is not a math number that you will never use. This is a resource that you can use, not just econ economists. How do we calculate the GDP? Well, we calculate all the spending done by consumers. We calculate all the spending done by businesses, which is investment, which is things like, if I have my own business, maybe I need to add another warehouse house to store all of my inventory, all of my goods. Maybe I need to buy an extra truck to transport my goods. Maybe I need to buy a bulldozer because I build houses and I got to bulldoze things. Or maybe I need to buy more hammers or I need to buy more computers. That's the money that businesses spend. So businesses are a lot like consumers. They spend money within the country too. You buy a computer, businesses also buy computers. That calculates how much is being spent. I'm going to skip the G, which is government spending. The government also spends. The government spends money to pay for education of students. The government spends money to pay to protect its citizens through police, to protect its citizens through firefighters, to build roads to help the citizens out. So the government spends money as well. The government spends money just like consumers spend money, just like investors spend money. And last, exports. That's what you sell out of the country. Imports are what you bring into the country. If I export a good, let's say I sell a computer to China. They get the computer, I get the money. That money comes into our GDP. That goes into our spending. If I buy a computer from China, my American dollars go out. And that's less money in the economy. That's less money that can be spent in the economy. That would make our country less stable. It's all about having the dollar bills and the spending within our country so that goods and services can be produced. If the money's not here to be spent, the, produ the goods and services will not be produced. Visuals that help you see what the things that I just talked about. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about investment. I just said that ain't exports and imports. Exports is out. That's the one on the left side, the picture on the left. We are exporting out. The goods go out, but the money comes in. We are producing the goods, and that's why GDP, we're calculating the products that we sell. Okay, we're calculating what we sell. We, what we sell to other countries, what we sell to consumers, what we sell to the government, what we sell to businesses. Imports is not what we sell. This is what we buy in from China. What we buy in, and our money goes out. Export more than the import. That's a basic idea from mercantilism that we've studied earlier this year. Um, investment, like I just said earlier, businesses spend just like they're a human being. If you run a business, you got to spend money. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, you got to spend money to make money. Now, often businesses call this an investment because they are. They're investing in their business. They're putting money in so that eventually it will become more money. 
It's more of an investment. A lot of times when we spend money, we're not necessarily investing. We're buying a cheeseburger, we eat the cheeseburger, and it's done. When businesses spend money to buy a computer, they plan on using that computer for a couple years and using that computer to generate more money. There's the formula again. Make sure you know the formula. I know that your end of grade test will not have you calculate this, but you just want to have a general idea of, well, what are we calculating? What is the root of GDP? What do these numbers I showed you before, what actually goes into making America fat and Africa red? And the state of New York, dark red, meaning they have a lot of money. And West Virginia, not high at all. And the numbers that go into it is, are the consumers spending? Are their businesses spending in that state? Is the government of that state able to spend money? And here you can see, over time, the increase in GDP. It goes up, it goes down. Every time you see a little bit of a drop, those are basically recessions. You can see our latest drop down. Our GDP went down. And when our GDP goes down and there's less spending, there's less products available to you, the consumer. And our country is kind of unstable. But when we're spending and going up and up and up, that means there are more goods being produced, like health care, like education, like services such as police and firefighters. There's a lot of goods available and you have a lot of opportunities to live your life and our country is strong and stable. When GDP goes up, it basically means your country is growing and is stable. Everything you need to live. When it goes down, not so much. It's a lot like you. If you think of individually, this is the money that you make. If you are making more money, then you're doing well, you can buy what you need. When all of a sudden you start making less money, you cannot buy the things that you used to be able to buy. And you have to make changes. And your life is a little unstable. But once your salary goes back up, you can start again buying the things that you need. When it goes down, you're not as stable. And so a lot of times in economics, what happens to you is the same thing that happens to a country. As GDP goes up, this is a big one to remember. This will be a test question. When GDP goes up, the country is stable and it's growing and healthy. When GDP drops, it is the opposite. And here's the same thing, the same chart we just showed you. Here the country is growing and is stable. Unstable, bad times, worry, ups and downs. Now it's not necessarily a standard for the measure of living. It doesn't really show you exactly because, you know, during these really good times, not everyone is doing well. But overall, in general, the economy is doing well. High GDP, make sure you notice, you have a stable, a strong country. High GDP means people can spend, people have money, people can buy what they need. Low GDP reflects the idea that people are not spending a lot, probably because they do not have money and they cannot buy everything they need. They have to make choices. Maybe they have to make a choice between should I pay for my college education or should I buy health care? Should I buy a home or do I have to rent an apartment? Can I you know, pay for my child to go to private school? Can I pay for my child to have health care? Can I make the payments to send my child to uh, summer, uh, additional summer education or after school tutoring? That's all reflected here. Thank you guys.